Welcome to part three of my Aurora forecasting series. Parts one and two prepped you for some basics and the reasons why the Arctic isn't the only place to see northern lights. And I introduced you to some of the satellites that we use for predicting space weather. If you haven't yet watched those, click in the corner to start from the beginning. Although we are still deep in a solar minimum, Solar Cycle 25 is getting well underway with recent activity like an M-class flare. The first of its kind in a few years, but not terribly impressive compared to what's possible. So now is a great time to learn about what to expect as we approach solar maximum, and especially where to get data. A review of the satellites already mentioned in part two and what data we can obtain from them. SOHO today is primarily valued for its coronagraph, which allows us to see solar storms leaving the sun's atmosphere, the corona, and does so from the perspective of Earth and just inside Earth's orbit around the sun. SDO and SOHO are both valued for monitoring sunspots, solar flares, coronal holes, and the magnetic complexity of sunspots, which is a topic I'll cover more in later episodes. GOES weather satellites give us X-ray intensities for measuring solar flares and energetic particles interacting with Earth's immediate neighborhood. And finally, ACE and DISCOVER provide us with solar wind data as it approaches Earth, including its speed, velocity, density, and magnetic polarity. With information combined from each of these important spacecraft, we can make short, medium, and even long-range forecasts of when northern lights and other space weather phenomena might happen here on Earth. But we have another tool available to make forecasts even better. Next, we have the spacecraft Stereo A and Stereo B or, well, just Stereo A. A for ahead and B for behind. Stereo's instruments are fairly similar to SOHO and SDO. However, these two spacecraft allowed us to see the sides of the sun invisible from Earth to monitor for incoming sunspots or to watch outgoing sunspots to see whether they might continue to grow or decay. Unfortunately, contact with Stereo B was lost back in 2014 after the spacecraft began to slowly spin out of control. Its radios and solar panels weren't pointed to where they needed to be to maintain contact and recovery efforts were unsuccessful. Currently, Stereo A, or AHEAD, has actually lapped around the sun's orbit and currently views the side of the sun that was originally monitored by Stereo B. In other words, at least for the next several years, we can still see the incoming side of the sun's disk, where new sunspots and coronal holes will eventually emerge and later be visible from Earth. So for now, we can see potential aurora producing phenomena with lots more advanced notice. Getting honorable mentions here are Trace, Ulysses, the Parker Solar Probe, Resi, and Japan's Hinod spacecraft. Each of these have very important functions for researching the sun and the sun-earth environment. However, their instruments or even these spacecraft's locations are either not well suited to helping us forecast northern lights specifically, or they might at best serve as backups if we lost contact with other important solar monitoring satellites. So you might be wondering where we can look at all of this data. And you might be wondering with such a large amount of satellites all streaming data and images back to Earth, and needing some way of alerting the public or satellite operators or power grid operators that space weather is incoming. In fact, you might even think it makes sense to have a dedicated government forecasting office, kind of like the United States Storm Prediction Center or Weather Prediction Center, which alerts the public when Earth-based storms that threaten life or property are possible in the days ahead. And you'd be right. The Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, is where multiple interested groups are provided free real-time space weather information and forecasts that might affect anything from radio communications to the power grid. Specific alerts and forecasts are made for all sorts of possible conditions. And one of those use cases is Aurora. So the first place on the list to go for data and images is the Space Weather Prediction Center website. Specifically, the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard are where ACE, GOES X-ray, and SOHO's coronagraph are right there to view. And now it's time to talk about Ovation. Ovation is a model that takes data from ACE, DISCOVER, other satellites and ground observations, and then produces a really neat graphic that roughly approximates where northern and southern lights may be visible on Earth over the next 30 minutes or so. Now, Ovation is nice, but it isn't perfect. For one, it might lead some people to believe that this is too literal. The auroral oval doesn't exactly look like this, and the colors only represent the probability of aurora, not what the aurora itself looks like 
or where it will be. And seeing the original source data is still better in my opinion, but Ovation is a great way to get a feel for how current solar wind parameters relate to what we can expect for Aurora, and for that, I think it's a great tool to get started and learn on. Now, SWPC's site is pretty good, but what if you want some more bloggy style explanations and news to spice things up? That's where spaceweather.com comes in. Daily information about everything space weather, including things like meteor showers, or rare events like sprites, news, user-submitted pictures, and musings about northern lights from all over the world. Shameless plug, I've even had my work featured on this site several times. And right there on the website's homepage are links to some of the same data viewable on the SWPC page. This is one website that I check every single day, just like a news site, and I've been doing this since roughly 1999. But if you prefer, they also are on Twitter and Facebook. Speaking of Facebook, there are Aurora communities on Facebook that you can join. But my favorite is the Great Lakes Aurora Hunters page. The photographs, skills, artwork, and even cookies coming from this page just blow my mind. There are other groups based in other countries, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a more active, dedicated, or supportive group of Aurora enthusiasts than this one. Maybe you're thinking, websites are kind of old hat or you do everything from a mobile device. You'd rather have an app for that, and you'd be in luck. Now, there's quite a few Aurora forecasting tools and space weather monitoring apps on the Google and Apple stores, and I encourage you to test drive any of them. But the one I prefer is Aurora Alerts. For a few dollars, you can get lifetime alerts for pretty much whatever you want to know. For example, you can set a threshold for solar wind speed or the latest KP index, set the times that you might want to actually see those alerts. You can even set alternate locations for family members, for example, and let them know if Northern Lights might be visible for them. It's a really handy tool. And don't worry, I'm not being paid by them. In fact, uh, just a fair warning, I find this app to be a little bit buggy and sometimes frustrating to use, but maybe that's just my experience. Even still, just having these apps won't necessarily make it so that you'll instantly know when Aurora are visible where you are. These apps leave it up to you to interpret the data, even the alerts, to decide when and where to look. And that's where I can help. Okay, so this was a short installment in the series to help bridge the gap between the basics and where to actually gather data to help you forecast northern lights. I'm working on part four right now, and if it's ready, you'll see a link right here in the corner or at the end of this video. And in that one, I'm going to cover some case studies to help you recognize certain kinds of events and interpret some data. And in part five, it'll be time to talk about aurora observation and photography. And this office studio setup is totally a work in progress. I hope you'll like what I come up with. This channel covers lots of cool things you can see in the sky, or maybe check out some of my Aurora videos. Thanks for watching part three. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, subscribe so you won't miss the next ones. Until then, I hope you'll get outside and learn something new.